a reversal design with the template that you have available to you on the course site. The template that you have already has the data set up. So you see two columns. One is baseline and one is treatment. The Baseline is set up initially with 10 baseline sessions. Remember that baseline means there's no intervention. And if you have more, all you need to do is simply add a data point in the baseline column and delete a data point in the treatment column. If I then have another, if my treatment goes a little bit longer, I can do the same thing. So you can move it around to fit what your data is. You need to make sure that this data is changed and you're not using the information in the template, but you can use the template to see how to set the data up. So I need to make a graph using it. So I'm going to highlight the baseline and the treatment columns. And then I'm going to go to charts at the top and I want a line graph. And I specifically want a line graph that is a marked line. Now, I'm going to make this full screen so we can look at it a little bit more closely. I really like this to work with this on a larger screen on its own sheet. So in order to do that, I'm going to select the graph. I'm going to select it here. I'm going to right click or double finger click on a trackpad or control um, click on a map mouse and I want to move the chart I want to move it to its own sheet I'm going to call it participant one reversal now I've done this earlier so when we're done this is going to be the finished product of what we're going to have accomplished um, so Here's what we need to do to get from here to there. First of all, we don't need the legend, so if we just select it and hit delete or hit backspace, it will go away. Almost anything that you want to change on the graph itself, you can get to from chart layout. Now, on a Mac, the chart layout is up here. On a PC, you may find it in a drop-down menu. Um, so just be aware that you may have to look a little bit for it. Um, I want to add a title to my chart. So I want my title to be above the chart. I'm going to name it Participant 1 Reversal Design. In a study, you might just name it Participant 1 Challenging Behavior or whatever it is. Now. This baseline is an example of a scale that we want to decrease. So the baseline is high and the treatment is low. Uh, if you're doing a skill-based intervention, it's going to be the opposite. Your baseline will be low and your treatment hopefully will be higher. Now, I need to label my axes so that I know what they are. I can do that by either going to axes titles. I can also click on the axis down here, right click on it, and I can format the axis. And that brings this up. Now I want to, the scale is fine. I don't need to actually make any changes to that. But I do want to add a title, um, which is not an option there, so I do have to do it from up here. The horizontal title is going to be sessions. And then I want to have a vertical title and I want it to be rotated so that it's sideways and it's going to be frequency of challenging behavior. Okay, so now that I have everything labeled, I want my lines and my dots to all be the same color. I would prefer that they be um, black so that they can easily be printed in black and white. Um, the easiest way to do that is to click on the graph so that you can see how it's highlighted 
the points and you can right click format the data series that brings me to this so there are four things that I will need to change I need to change the marker fill and choose black I need to change the marker line which is the outline of the markers I need to change the line and I need to change the marker style because I also want the markers to match each other. So right now you see they're squares and diamonds. I would like them both to be squares. Now, I would also like them to be smaller and the line to be thinner. So if I click on line and I go to weights and arrows, I can choose one and a half. If I click on marker style, I can just hit the down arrow. And I'm going to set it at 6. So it's just a little bit more precise that way. So that's the baseline is now in black. Now I need to do intervention. So I select my data by clicking on any of the points. I right click. I go to format data series. My marker fill needs to be black. My marker line needs to be black. My marker style needs to be square and a number six and my line needs to be black and I want it to be thinner and I believe we set it at two and a quarter nope we set it at one and a half so that's about right okay now the next thing I need to do is make sure that I have my phase lines that differentiate my baseline from my intervention so I need to go to my menu and I need to make sure I've selected my graph, go to my menu, insert picture, and it's a shape. So I click on my line and if I put my line where I want it to be and I hold the shift button, it will make sure that the line I draw is straight. I wanted to intersect the x-axis just a little bit. Now, if I want to move it over, I can drag it or I can use my arrow keys. I just really want it to be on that tick mark. Now, I don't want it to be blue. I'm going to get rid of this so that we can see it. Um, I want it to be black, so I'm going to right-click format shape. I want the color to be black and I would like weight to be a little thinner. And you can make this dashed or you can make it solid. Typically a solid line would be a significant change which I would say baseline to intervention would be a significant change so I'm going to leave it solid. Now I need three of those so if I select it and hit control or command C and then control or command V I have no idea why I put it over there and so we use the undo button I still want it to be black Okay, right click, copy, and we'll right click, paste. That'll be an easier way to do it. I want to make sure that that lines up on that tick mark between my two points. And then I want to paste it again and line it up over here. Now, I need to have labels. Um, 
that tell me that this is baseline and that the other phase is intervention. So again, the easiest way to do that is to insert a picture and let's do a shape and we'll do a square. I want my square to not have any fill, so up here I can either right click and format the shape or I can go up here and hit no fill and I would prefer that the line be black and then I can just, if I've selected it, start typing. For some reason my type is white today, I'm not sure why, but I can change it to black. Now I'm going to do the same thing I did with the lines because it's easier than creating new ones. I can get rid of my shape menu. I'm going to copy and paste. A lot of what you learn with Excel is that a lot of it is making sure that you have cop you have selected the right thing. If you're not getting the results you want, you may not be selecting the right thing. So, for instance, when I selected this, it said if it says rectangle 6, I've selected the rectangle. If it says plot area, I've selected the whole graph. So just be careful with that. Okay, so I want to do rectangle 6. I need this to be intervention. I want to copy that, so I'm going to do Control C, Command C, and Command V. I'm going to put my intervention in my other intervention. And then I need to copy. See, I had selected the wrong thing. Make sure you've copied the triangle, copy, paste. Now, I would like these boxes to go away because, frankly, they annoy me. So I go to Format, and I want there to be no line. I just think it looks better that way. Again, make sure you've copied the right thing. Okay, and I have a reversal design. Now, to show you how to put it into a Word document, there are two ways that you can do it. One is to select the whole graph, so you see how the blue surrounds the graph. And then I can either right click and copy or do my Command C. And then I have to come out of full and open Word. If I right, if I right click on this, I can paste special and I can paste it as a picture, an Excel chart, or an office graphic object. So let's look at what the different things will do for us. Make sure that you do not have paste link. If I do a picture, it take, literally takes a picture of it and inserts it that way. If you want to make sure everything stays exactly the same and you're not going to make, to make any changes to it, that is probably the easiest way to do it. Um, another way is right click. And watch what happens if I just do paste. It gets all kind of funny because the uh, elements of it change font and that throws our spacing off. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to right click, paste special. Let's say I want to put it in as an Excel chart object. And then if I add more data to it, it will change. Now, the problem that I have with this is it's made it too large. So I need to shrink it. And I can do that by just grabbing the corner, getting that double arrow, and shrinking it down. And what you see is it stays in the way that it is. Um, and then if I change the data on the spreadsheet, it will actually change it in this. So if you're not finished with it, this is a good way to go. But either one of those will work. 
and then you can paste it into your document and you will be ready to go.